hey girl hey welcome back to my channel and if you are new here welcome sis and if you are returning hey girl hey please like and share this video before we get started while wow, right now because you already know i'm gonna be dropping some gems you already know you're gonna like it so you might as well just do that and do the housekeeping right before you come in today we're going to be talking about how to be a single mother how to like tips and advice on being a happy successful thriving single mother a little bit about me um i had my daughter and became a single mother in 2009 right and between 2009 and 2020 i was a single mother i became married i got married uh february of 2020 and right now it's january of 2024 so i've been married for about four years but i was a single mother for 10 years of my life and during that time not only did i finish college um i tripled my income paid off over sixty thousand dollars in less than two years moved on my own was thriving happy launched my your pretty pennies brand feel free to follow me everywhere on social media at your pretty pennies as well and so i just wanted to give you some tips and tricks on how to become a thriving single mother all right number one create a vision for your family no matter how large or how small you know how many children you have y'all are still a family right even if right now there's no man and no head of household that's a male um you still absolutely have to look at your family as a unit and you need to create a vision for them as a leader right so you have to get clear on what are your goals for your children what are your goals for yourself right what are your goals for um traveling for your motherhood what do you want to get better at right what's a family bucket list of yours right so one thing that i did with my daughter again i was a mother of one for 10 years but again no matter how small or how large a family is with a single mother at the head you absolutely should be doing these things all right and so we created a bucket list every year of what she would like to do together what i would have liked for us to do together and then also i had my personal goals that i wanted to elevate and do and um constantly level up in different areas and then we had goals for her right so she was a youtuber now she's in track she was in track she was in sports she was in um school so we had goals around her grades around you know scholarships all these different things right you have to get super clear on that right it's like using a road map but you don't it's like trying to get to point b but you don't have a road map from point a where you are by you creating a vision for your family you're getting from point a to point b and for you only you will know what that is for your family all right and so you have to get super clear number two understand your income streams and expenses to ensure that you have disposable income to consistently accomplish your financial and lifestyle goals. Now, this is key because you are a single mother, multiple streams of income is going to be so key for you. When I was a single mother, I worked when I was working full time, I worked full time and then I started to build my side business. I used to extreme coupon where I did classes and also resold my stockpile. And then I also cut a lot of expenses like on food, on household goods, by couponing and, you know, earning money back on taking those items off the store. Right. And so you got to be really intentional and really like, um, really intentional and really clear on what are your income streams especially as a single mother what can you handle how what type of income streams can you place to where you can still be at home or around your kids and your kids can be helping you develop those income streams can be around to assist you in those income streams right to where you're not always dropping them off it's cool to have a nine to five where while they're in school or while they're in before care or after school care you're doing your thing when you're working your nine to five or your main source of income but when you're adding on or other sources of income try not to do the income streams that's going to take you away from your kids for even more throughout the day right so whenever i did budgeting analysis whenever i did classes my daughter was in tow 
right? She was always there. So just be mindful of that. When I went couponing, my daughter was always there. Always create little side hustles or streams of income where your kids can help you, where they can learn from you, where they can glean from you, where they can sit at your feet while you're doing what you need to do, all right? Also, get really clear about expenses you don't need temporarily until you have the bandwidth to earn extra money, right? So there was a time when Taryn was younger where she was a lot more needier um, during that time to where I couldn't make a lot of money as a single mother on my own because she needed more time and attention with me. However, as she got older, when she got into seven, eight, nine years old, and she was going with her grandparents or she had more play dates or this or that, I had more free time in order to generate more income. And so in those earlier years, I had to really be strategic to make sure I was living below my means to where I had extra money to put towards financial and lifestyle goals to put towards paying off debt to put towards building a savings to put towards having a nice savings account to where if she got sick or if I had to take off work I had money set aside to be able to cater to her while she's sick without having to choose between one or the other and forfeit a paycheck or be late on bills or anything like that right so be super intentional about what comes in how much you're bringing in you should always be striving to have more coming in and then also cut what you can right? Cut what you can, especially depending on the season of life you're in, all right? Number three, create a village and delegate things, all right? Sometimes as mothers, especially single mother, if you get into the driver's seat, you get into the super independent mentality and mindset. No, we are shooting for interdependence, right? We are activating, creating, paying for, reaching out to building whatever word you want to use a village to where it serves and support us to to achieve our financial and lifestyle goals okay even as a single mother again the goal is to be thriving successful and happy all right it's not to be muddling through life robbing peter to pay paul struggling stressed out overworked tired you know restless um under underslept we're not doing any of that right you want to be a healthy happy su successful thriving mother all right so here are some things you know i got my notes here are some things that i wrote down that i remember from my journey those 10 years i became a single mother and this can help you too so get help with your children when it comes to watching them whether it's child care for some of us we need to put our children in before school care or after school care if it will allow you to get a few more things Things done throughout the day right getting your kids on a bus route for some of us we can absolutely have our kids ride the bus to school versus you always being the one picking up and dropping off they'll be just fine I wrote the bus my whole elementary middle school and part of high school until my friends started learning how to drive and and went to school and I was just fine with that right put them kids on that bus if you need to you know if you have active grandparents and they're always asking what can they do what can they help with maybe doing pickups or drop-offs a couple of days a week right maybe every Friday they come and get your kids from school and then go do something or go have lunch or late lunch or dinner with them and to where you get a Friday afternoon or evening for self-care or to start the content videos or do whatever it is that you need to do right be strategic about activating aunties uncles brothers sisters cousins um i have down here have a mommy's helper meaning like if you have a cousin who's like 14 15 years old or a um a niece or a nephew at that age who can come over one to three days a week after school and just kind of help you with the kids right help you sit with the kids help you clean up help watch them and corral them while you're cooking dinner help them with homework if they're really good at homework while you're making dinner so you're not doing homework help and dinner or you could take a shower or you could take a bath or you could take a nap while they're doing homework right be very intentional and mindful because you got to be in the driver's see of your life at this point all right carpooling right if your kids kids are in sports or if they're in activities that's an after school connect with other moms or dads and say hey if i drop off monday and tuesday can you do wednesday and thursday or monday and tuesday can you do wednesday and thursday yeah i said that right or if i do monday and wednesday can you do tuesday tuesday and thursday right get intentional about taking some things off your plate activating other people 
Teach your older children to cook simple meals and help with laundry. In my opinion, one load of laundry a day is best, but if you live in like an apartment or something like that to where you don't have access to a washer and dryer every day or you have to pay, I would definitely do it on a weekly basis, but you can always give each person a job to do, right? So one, so let's say if you wash one kid changes it into the dryer, another kid folds or sorts them into baskets, like activate your children because remember children are going to be adults in in adulthood longer they are going to be children in childhood right and so you have to teach them these life skills especially since they took life skills classes out of high school and middle school you got to be the one to teach them right and so by you teaching them how to cook spaghetti how to make the meat for tacos how to make um chicken alfredo like all these simple meals that can feed the family to where when they're 14 15 16 17 18 they're taking over meal meal time right to where you don't have to right they're taking over laundry they're taking over vacuuming they're taking over working together to keep your household tidy so it's not on, all on your hands all right um Use your sister, friends, or aunties to do protective styles every two weeks on your kid's hair. So if you are not up to or if it's hard on you to do your children's hair, especially your girls, but boys nowadays can get, you know, braids and twists and everything else, ask somebody in your, in your immediate family or a friend and say, hey, every two weeks, can you twist her hair? Can you two-strand twist her hair? Can you do box braids? Can you do knotless braids? Can you do braids and beads, right, every two weeks? just to take it off your lap, right? Take it off your plate. Hire a cleaning lady for deep cleaning your home once per month. This was a game changer. Me and my kids, we tidy our home, but we have a cleaning lady that comes and deep cleans the home that dusts and do all that stuff so I don't have to. Create a tradition to where your children stay with their dad or involved grandparents um you know one week at a time either on summer break or winter break and then that way that gives you a week to get caught up on stuff that gives you a week to just let your hair down to relax to date to to um go to a seminar to go to um a training to get elevated in your career like whatever that looks like you can absolutely say hey my kids are of age let's put them on a flight to atlanta let's put them on a flight to new york city or whatever the case is let's do to where um they can fly as an unaccompanied minor and an unaccompanied minor program or you know drop them off pick them up if it's in driving distance to where they go with their their other side of their family get that intentional time spent and then you get your time back to be able to put your ducks in a row get a breath of fresh air because here's the thing raising children truly does require two parents if you want to do it gracefully and with ease and so when you are a single parent when you are a single mother you got to be really intentional to get your breaks and your time because you know i do now that i'm married get time and breaks and and um relief whenever i need it from my husband right and so when you don't have a husband or a spouse or their dad in there on a day-to-day -day basis to help relieve you you absolutely have to be proactive about finding that around the you know around the people around you with the people that are around you all right so thank you so much for watching this video let me know in the comments if this was helpful sorry for some of the words stuttering my mouth is dry i feel a cold coming on i'm not feeling too good but i really wanted to get this video out and so i am healed in jesus name i will not get sick i'm going to take my elderberry syrup as soon as we get off this uh video and so yes please share this with another single mother or somebody that's potentially becoming a single mother and i will talk to you in my next video Bye bye